Hello, welcome to Virtually Penned on the Bond with me, your virtual and actual host, Rian Edwards. Uh, in the time of Corona, uh, where we are all self-isolating and self-quarantined, um, I've invited some of my most loyal and some of my most favourite open micers uh, to give you a poem, uh, which they've all videoed on their, on their phones and shared via WhatsApp. Okay, so I'm going to kick things off for the time being. Um, I'm going to give you the title poem of my second collection, which is The Estate Agent's Daughter, which is out next month in June uh, with Saren Books, which you can pre-order now. So this is the title poem, The Estate Agent's Daughter. The estate agent's daughter is sold as seen, semi-detached, in walking distance of pen, abontarogor, all its modcons located in a quiet hammerhead. She has wrought iron gates, hard standing parking for two. Her pea gravel driveway sweeps to a cloudy apple composite door, stained window with leaded detail. Her hallway is carpeted with sycamore seeds and cherry blossom throughout. White dog leg staircase with spindle gallery landing with access to a loft conversation with a skylight widow. Her ground floor comprises open plan lunge diner, recesses either side of her fire breast wall. Her oak writing desk has been nudged to the brink of the bay. Curtains may be drawn around her to quarantine at will. She boasts a galley kitchen with splashback tiling, integrated frigidity, freezer, sunken spotlighting, eye level oven rarely used, white goods to remain. The master bedroom is in dire need of updating, Juliet balcony in state of disrepair. Outside she has a storm porch with power and lighting, chipped area to the side. The estate agent's daughter retains many original features, coved ceilings, double gazing throughout, unsuitable for first time buyers, no ongoing chain. I would like to introduce the wonderful poet that is Tracy Reese. Tracy Reese's first pamphlet, Teaching a Bird to Sing, was published by Green Bottle Press in 2016. Her poetry and essays can be found in anthologies and journals, including Planet, New Welsh Review, The Lonely Crowd, and Poems from the Borders from Seren. Her poetry has been exhibited at the Senedd and in stage plays with Winterlight Theatre. She was a Literature Wales bursary recipient and is a graduate of Cardiff University's MA in Creative Writing. So please let me introduce the fantastic poet that is Tracy Rees. Hello everyone, I'm Tracy Rees. I'm going to be reading a new poem for you today. Um, I wrote it fairly recently uh, for an anthology that's being published, I think in the summertime, um, and it's called Bloody Amazing. It's been edited by uh, Jill Lambert and Rebecca Bilker, and um, it's about uh, ladies' periods, not full stops. Mine is called First Spell. If we can magic our first bleed into being, then I am guilty of witchcraft. I conjured it from articles in magazines, whispers from cousins and sisters who bloomed on each new moon, the colour of the inside of the mouth, the shape of a river slipping into estuaries, flowing into the world sure and hot. Magicked from words spoken by kind school nurses. The diagrams I brought home, the afternoon we got the talk. Swinging my little parcel like candy. The word in my stomach, spilling off my lips like an incantation. Period. 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 Thank you. Let me now introduce you. Uh, to our next reader. Uh, this is his screen debut and he is the talented um, progeny of Mrs Tracy Reese. His name is Morgan Reese. He already has a better biography than me at 14. Um, he is a 14 year old poet from Bridgend. He was a foil young poet of 2018. His work has been published in the Poetry Society Anthology, uh, The Walls Were Not Big Enough to Hold You, broadsides by Black Bow Poems and featured it in the essay Unpicking the Locks in the New Welsh Review. Morgan likes exploring science, space, the environment, and science fiction in his writing. 
So without further ado, let me introduce the debutante that is Morgan Rees. Little boy, Earth, the turquoise world, it keeps its children inside. But one doesn't understand, six years old. He plays with his mother, Earth, unafraid of what she tells him. This boy cares nothing for mother. He plays with his mother's fire. Stop, she yells. Little boy can't hear her, blinded by his own curiosity. Twelve years old. Little boy's curiosity now turns to greed. He's hurting other children. Mother, they cry. Little boy is going strong. His strength rivaling Mother Earth. Stop, little boy, before it's too late. Little boy doesn't hear. Thirty years old. Little boy is no longer little. He is all grown up. He is unstoppable. He has slain all the children. He has uncovered all of his mother's secrets. He knows what the trees do. He knows what the oceans do. He knows what the elements do. And they know him. The trees will burn. The oceans will choke. And the elements will not save him. I'd like to introduce our next poet. I had the um, amazing pleasure of meeting this poet um, in Winchester, um, I believe two, I think it was probably even three years ago now. And mercifully and fortuitously, she happened to live in Cardiff. And I sort of regard her as my protege. Probably she isn't, no, she's brilliant anyway. Anyway, her name is Emily Cottrell. Uh, she hails from Alfred and Derbyshire, which is where, near where I grew up, actually. Her debut pamphlet, The Day of the Flying Ants, was published in 2019 as part of Caroline Duffy's Laureate's Choice Selection. Her poetry has appeared in a variety of publications, uh, including Poetry Wales, The Colveston Review, Cheval and Acumen, and she lives and works in Cardiff. So please welcome Emily Cottrell. When my father dies, I will fight any man who mentions God at the funeral. Dad believes in step on a crack, break your back, and the youthful power of the rock of Aphrodite. He does not hold with your organisation. He does not hold with much. We were at our best in that Portuguese supermarket, when Cliff Richard signed bottles of his rosé wine and we, more uninterested than unimpressed, browsed around the queue for souvenirs. Let's not have stuff. Someone else will have to make the baklava for the wake because I will be in Cyprus, feet on the warm ground, eyes on the old coast, waiting for him to swim back from around the near side of his youth rock. I would like to introduce you to the next poet, uh, the gorgeous Julie Griffiths. Uh, she is an English teacher. She has tons of kids, far too many, about five, something like that. She has three dogs and a bearded dragon, and she is an incredible poet, Julie Griffiths. Hello, my name is Julie Griffiths, and this is my poem called Cutting Back for Colour. I cut the fuchsia right back to dried up twigs. The odd green shoot clings to the idea of becoming like obstinate stubble. I cut back for colour, take a punt on the outside chance of spring flowers. Of course, I know a promise when I see one, but it's just a husk, the fuchsia, like nothing pink could ever bloom from that debris. The sting of frost bites my barehanded hope. The day, pale as fever, lies in summer's sickbed, waiting, because everything will be exactly the same in the end. Thank you. I would like to introduce you to our next poet. Uh, she is a fellow Sarana, Saran poet such as myself. Uh, her name is Emily Blewett. Uh, she published her debut collection of poems, This Is Not A Rescue, in 2017. Uh, the title poem from the debut collection was highly commended for best individual poem in the 2016 Forward Prizes and is also published in the Forward Book of Poetry 2017. Uh, she's also the poetry editor for New Welsh Review. So please, without further ado, let me introduce you to the lovely, the gorgeous, Emily Blewett. Thank you. How far along are you? This week, my baby is a raspberry. 
I roll him around my tongue, tease out each eyelash segment, careful not to crush him. The baby is now a navel orange. I press my lips to his nib, leaves the faintest tooth marks. Savour the fragrance of bruised citrus, the oiled imprint of skin on skin. When my baby becomes a banana, still a little green, I turn him on his side and gently squeeze apart the seam. Hear the squeak, glimpse immaculate flesh inside. He's the world in a cantaloupe, tough, veined on the outside, too big for my mouth. We finish a watermelon. He enters rooms before I do, spits out, cries like little black pips. I clutch him like a netball, rotate my wrists, push out my chest and throw him laughing to the crowd. I'd like to introduce um, our next poet now. Uh, her name is Marcel Newbold. She loves poetry as a way of exploring digressions. Uh, she has recently been published in anthologies by Maytree Press and Animal Heart Press, um, as well as in several online poetry magazines. Uh, she is a poetry editor for Nightingale and Sparrow. She lives in Cardiff with her two children, and you can tweet her at Marcel Newbold. So please, without further ado, let me introduce you to Marcel Newbold. Fisher folk. And we walk along the estuary, the skeletal bed of shells, scallop, muscle and whelk crunch beneath our unnatural heaviness. We are foreigners in this land. And I tiptoe, bob to the channel marker, the green beacons six fathoms high above the barnacle base and touch the tidal raggedness for luck. Not for me, for the fisher folk whose lives depend on this bed of bones, this signal of hope that marks the edge of home and ruin. That's all we have time for now. I would like to thank all the poets who've taken um, part in Virtually Penned on the Bont. Um, hopefully the next time we will meet very much viscerally and in the flesh. Um, but yes, I'd like to thank all the poets who've taken part, um, including Tracy Reese, uh, the film debut by Morgan Reese, uh, Emily Blewett, Emily Cotterell, Julie Griffiths, and Marcel Newbold. Thank you ever so much. You keep safe, take care, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Mm -hmm.